This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Unlike most weeks, we're recording this prop show before most props are posted. We actually have a full offering for this week because it is the playoffs, fewer games to focus on, which means props are up. We can actually talk about legitimate lines we want to attack. We'll be doing that for today with Brandon Gadula. He is a senior uh, senior managing editor for Number Fire. We'll have him on to break down his favorite player props across Wild Card Weekend. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Brandon Gadula. Check him out on Twitter at Gadula13. Brandon, happy wild card weekend to you. Only the 17th time I've leaned on you for content this week. How are you doing today? I'm good. Yeah, I like the playoffs. Um, I know we all do, but I like the playoffs because it's a, it's a bit of a narrower slate and it's it's, you know, better teams and now we get to kind of play the game of is it better teams when it's Skylar Thompson and maybe Anthony Brown starting is it better well what I'll say for anyone who is not a fan of like quarterback protection if this is what you want this is what you're getting in some spots but these are not the games that I'm most uh most excited about I like the games with the fun quarterbacks and and the good players yeah, we want to complain about roughing the passer stuff, um, and there are legitimate gripes. But if the alternative is, you know, watching more of this, I'm okay with being, you know, a little bit cautious uh, with regard to that. Maybe get rid of the outliers, the weird ones. But we're going to break sure. down. Yeah, I'm sure okay. you have tons of props around the Dolphins and the Ravens this week, right? Yeah, just guys, let's all just do better. Make the right calls. Don't make the wrong calls. And then we're all set. You fixed officiating, Brandon. Uh, why are you here? You should be off. Uh, you should be Roger Goodell's like right hand person. Um, you know, I, I don't know why you're here. So I think I got to take advantage of you while you are here before you're hired to be head of officiating for the NFL. We'll break down uh, which situations Brandon's going at for the wild card weekend. Some players whose roles may change. As we get into the postseason and all of that. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts. Our wild card weekend traditional market betting previews are up. I have my first look back on monday we talked to ryan williams yesterday getting his read on the biggest game this week and his favorite bets over at fanduel sportsbook to get both of those search for covering the spread wherever you get your podcast hit subscribe and if you like what you hear leave us a rating interview you can also find all of these over on the fanduel youtube page the nfl saturday million for dfs is live on fanduel put your nfl knowledge to the test and create your best nine player roster while staying under the salary cap then use fanduel's live scoring feature to follow along as you compete for your share of a million dollars in cash prizes including two hundred thousand dollars of first place all for just a five dollar entry fee saturday is coming quickly but there is also a sunday million so head to fanduel.com and get your lineups in today eligibility restrictions apply go to fanduel.com or download the fanduel app for more details Let's dig in here to Wildcard Weekend and start things off with a, a topic we discuss over on our DFS podcast, Brandon, Heat Check Fantasy Podcast. That is players whose roles could change in the postseason. Specifically, I'm thinking back to like Aaron Jones a couple years ago. He had like a 70% snap rate, 65% snap rate during the regular season, and suddenly he's playing every snap during the postseason. So we see guys' roles change when they're not being conserved for later on in the year. Are there any guys specifically you think could get a boost or a decrease in the postseason under that uh, that kind of guys? Um, I kind of think that a lot of running backs fit that potential. Um, that's probably the case for you know every season where teams just will focus on their top running back. But you know in this current NFL, we're not seeing the 95, 90, 85 percent snap rates game after game for certain running backs. Uh, one, one player who used to have that uh, week in, week out is Christian McCaffrey. And I think that he's one of the more obvious candidates for someone whose role could increase. I know we talked about him on the DFS show uh, on Thursday, but it's really the running backs that I kind of am looking at and thinking there, there's one receiver 
but it's mostly the running backs. Like with McCaffrey, he could be just completely unleashed, and I would not be surprised one bit. The only problem is I think that the 49ers do believe in the ability of Elijah Mitchell to spell McCaffrey and right. avoid running McCaffrey into the ground. Um, in games with Mitchell, McCaffrey's workload has been scaled back a bit. You could easily see him play 85, 90% of snaps this week. Would not surprise me. Also wouldn't surprise me if he's still in that like 65 to 70% range where he has been with Mitchell. Um, especially if a they play from way ahead or b you know just show that they believe in, in Mitchell. Thankfully, nobody's forcing me to bet McCaffrey props, so yeah. that's fine. But um, I think it's a little bit more amb- ambiguous than I would like. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if we see McCaffrey unleashed within the same team. I think Debo Samuel is a really interesting name. Um, sixty-seven percent snap rate in Week 18 in his return in a game that the starters uh, did not finish we could see his workload scale way up, um, whatever he can handle, that kind of situation. Uh, but some more running backs, oh, almost like every – well, a lot of other running backs, I would say, kind of fit. Austin Eckler is one whose snap rate is never high. Mm-hmm. Um, that's always a big problem. It's been under uh, 60% snap rate in three straight. With He has one game all season with more than a 70% snap rate, which sounds wrong, but – I looked at it a lot of times and I think I'm pretty sure it's right, which is just kind of absurd. And with Mike Williams, not a hundred percent, like we could see Eckler uh, get scaled way up, um, especially if they are they're struggling to move the ball uh, either running back, honestly, for the giants and Vikings. So Dalvin cook, Saquon Barkley, I could see them getting like huge workloads. I'm not really as certain with like JK Dobbins, Joe Mixon they They kind of seem to be more capped on purpose. For, for different reasons. Yeah. Uh, we might be getting G- Gus Edwards back, so I don't know if we'll get Dobbins fully unleashed. Joe Mixon has a, a capable uh, number two behind him in some AJP Ryan. But I do think that like Leonard Fournette uh, could extend his lead over Rashad White in that Monday night game. That's kind of one thing I'm keying in on. I think a lot of like the underlying, uh, you know, reading between the lines suggests that like Leonard Fournette is going to step up from you know, around like a 55-ish percent snap rate to maybe be in playoff landing again. So um, I- I'm really liking Fournette this week. Any thoughts for you? Uh, yeah. am, I, am I too narrow on the, the running backs? So I think the Dobbins one, I think I'm more inclined to believe he'll get boosted up because they sat him in week 18, which is kind of like a signal thing. Like, okay, we're tipping our hand that we really want this guy to be the catalyst of our offense, especially with um, the injuries at quarterback. The question is how long can they do that? Because spread is very, very large there. I think it should be a bit larger personally. I think it should be double digits at this point for the Bengals. Um, So I think you could view that one both ways. The Lenny one is interesting because um, FanDuel Sportsbook has his rushing plus receiving number at 70 and a half. And that seems a little bit light if we make the assumption that, you know, playoff Lenny does come back. I think that playoff Lenny in 2023, I guess, I don't know, whatever year for the year, the season 2022 yeah. playoff Lenny in 2022 is different than playoff Lenny two years ago where he had a huge snap rate. Uh, but I still think we could expect an increase in his baseline. The interesting thing with the McCaffrey thing is, so you go back to those three games, so that three game split where McCaffrey played with Eli Mitchell they were still mixing in Jordan Mason a bit uh, in week 10. There was nothing from Mason in that game. McCaffrey 14 carries and six targets. But in week 11, Jordan Mason got four carries in week 12. He got five. I think those evaporate. So I wouldn't be shocked if we see both. Uh, if we see Eli Mitchell play a lot in this game, but I think that we'll still see a lot of work go McCaffrey's way regardless. Like they can play both at the same time. That's kind of what Kyle Shanahan wants is this like positionless football, uh, not total anarchy with Trent Williams running into motion every play like he had last year, but like um, not full anarchy, but he kind of wants that positionless football. So I would, I'm not looking at McCaffrey's uh, rushing plus receiving number because it's 113 and a half. That's very yeah. high. Um, I can't quite get there. The one I did want to ask you about is Austin Eckler, because I agree with your sentiment that he could get a role increase here because he actively asks for some time off um, during games because he does a lot of stuff. I would, too, if I were him. Um, He's very active. 
that could change in the postseason if he's, you know, if he wants to up his snap rate, I think they would let him. And his rushing plus receiving number at FanDuel Sportsbook is 89 and a half. And the reason I want to go that way is because, A, they can't run the ball. Uh, B, the Jags are good against the rush. And C, it gives you upside should Mike Williams not play in this game because we'd see a lot more passing game work for Eckler in that instance. So I think that of the, the role changes you mentioned, I think the one that sportsbook sportsbooks might be under accounting for is Eckler specifically. Any thoughts for you? Eighty nine and a half for him rushing plus receiving. Yeah, one. You know, we're going to talk Mike Williams here in just a second, a little bit more with like how it pertains to Josh Palmer, and those props are not up. Right. Um, but we are getting that we are getting the prop with with Austin Eckler. And I think if you confirm that Mike Williams either is not active or is going to be, you know on a pitch count because the chargers went ahead and did a really weird thing and got, you know, I'm not going to say their best receiver, but a game changing receiver. Injury. It's their most important receiver. Um, but yeah, I, I have Eckler's uh, projected scrimmage yards at 91.3. So it's, it's pretty close there, but I think you could easily make the case that if you start sprinkling in a little bit more of that usage that we're expecting that, that uh, that's a really good number at 80, uh, 89 and a half on FanDuel Sportsbook. His receiving a low number is also interesting. 35 and a half. He was at 42 and a half for the regular season. Obviously, that's an average versus a, a median. So, you know, there, there are flaws in looking at just that. But um, with Williams bagged up, I do think that's also kind of interesting. Now, you alluded to the uh, the Chargers pass catchers. Let's talk about some situations that are in flux. And a lot of the times when we discuss this, we'll be talking about situations where props are not up. And as you alluded to, we see Keenan Allen up at FanDuel Sportsbook, but no Josh Palmer, no Mike Williams. Is that the prime situation you're looking to target this week once we get clarity on the Mike Williams injury front? Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, it to me, like if I'm being if I'm being honest, it sounds like Mike Williams is not going to play a full game, whether he's active or not. It, right. You would think that he'd be practicing, you know, at a much higher capacity than – what we're seeing. I just I'm just so disappointed because Mike Mike Williams is very fun and uh Justin Herbert has had only a handful of games with both Mike Williams and Keenan Allen healthy, which might have been why, you know, that they they had Mike Williams and, and Keenan out there for as long as they did. I, I'm just still trying to piece it together. I know I'm hung up on it, but Mike Williams. Well, like, no, no, it's fair to be hung up on it because Brandon Staley <laughs> yesterday was like, Yeah, we want to manage Mike Williams reps in practice because he's hurt. Uh reps reps aren't as important as rest. I'm like, am I being gaslit? Is that, is this what gaslighting is? Like you decided to keep Easton stick inactive. Like you could have, you could have had people active to count for your 48 thing. Like the bucks had the same 48 player active restriction as you did. And they still played three quarterbacks. They still got their guys out of there eventually. Like, I think this is what gaslighting is. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we don't have the props up for, for Josh Palmer. I don't think I, I think I'd stay away from anything uh, Mike Williams related because yeah. I could see him playing on a really, really low snap count. Yeah. Um, maybe just some high leverage uh, stuff, but you know, for, for Josh Palmer in games without Williams, you might have a different sample that, that you uh, are liking, but I've since week nine, you know, at least week nine on, I found four games that I think might be relevant with Palmer and Keenan Allen playing, but Mike Williams not really playing or not playing a lot of snaps in those games. Josh Palmer's averaged eight and a half targets, uh, six catches and 65.3 yards. So I'm not saying any, cause I, I, I don't know what his uh, catch prop would be, but I'm not saying that if it's under, you know, six that I'm betting it for sure. But right. those are pretty good numbers for Palmer. Yeah. He's had a, he's had a good workload. Uh, without Mike Williams, that's definitely one of the uh, situations in flux that I'm kind of waiting to see. And I would easily can, uh, envision myself betting on some Josh Palmer props. Any others you see that you want to keep an eye on uh, with situations that may be in flux for this week? Yeah, so I don't know how in flux I would call this, but I think Zay Jones might be like not getting enough respect um, down the stretch with all their pass catchers healthy and with Travis Etienne active. Zay Jones is at 7.4 targets per game, which is just shy of Christian Kirk's 7.7. Um, his receiving prop, uh, Zay Jones, that is to clarify, 50 and a half with minus 114 odds on both sides. I think that the over is pretty enticing there um, in this game. So I, I think that's one that um, that I'm, I'm looking to, to target as well. Another, again, this is not like truly in flux, but you know, statistically, 
in terms of a variance standpoint, Gabe Davis from a catch rate over expectation standpoint, uh, the chargers, uh, sorry. Um, Gabe Davis in terms of the catch rate over expectation. Uh, we talked about this on the heat check and you talked me into Gabe Davis, but since the buy, just put 40, that on me. Oh no. <laughs> uh, 40, 45.3 yards. Um, 6.6 targets per game. If you weight that for like some, some downfield and red zone work, like 10.6 targets. So it's like a really good workload. 4.6 downfield targets per game. Uh, 15.7 yard a dot, but a catch rate over expectation of minus 4.4%. So, uh, you know, again, even with like the underperformance on a per, per target basis, he's at 45.3 yards per game. That split the prop is 48 and a half with uh, minus 114 on both sides. Again, I lean the over there. I kind of realize I'm, I'm leaning on a lot of overs, which is not typically my, uh, my forte, but it is kind of where I'm seeing uh, certain things. Yeah. With Gabe, I think he's also interesting if you want to, because of the way he gets his targets, I think that he'd be interesting for alternate markets. Um, taking advantage of the volatility in him um, like his uh, 60 plus receiving yards. Mark is plus plus one fifty four. I'd want to run that through like a, you know, a, bet scope distribution calculator something like that to make sure i'm not getting you know because it's only the one way um that's the the key thing to be wary of with alt markets is you're only getting the one way prop you're not typically getting like an over under on 60 plus yards so you want to make sure that it's a it's a legitimate number but i think that gabe davis in general is pretty enticing for alt markets because of the way he gets targeted so often downfield all right let's take a look at some props that are up right now over at FanDuel sportsbook any yardage props stand out to you right now brandon yeah, realizing that it's two more overs, which again I, I usually <laughs> I usually find the unders uh, to target, but I like Travis Etienne over seventy eight and a half rushing yards uh, minus one fourteen. Um, just a really good rushing matchup doesn't get a whole lot better. Chargers are, are allowing one point five three rushing yards over expectation per carry, and no other team is above point nine five on the season according to Next Gen stats in weeks thirteen through eighteen. Etn after that like sideline game 66.2 uh, yards per game but 0.83 rushing yards over expectation per carry he, he's been very good i think one long rush um, i i do kind of like that would very much help him get there he has that explosiveness still i think even though he's not 100 percent, but nobody is at this point in the season and i kind of think the jaguars do some work in that game and they better <laughs> got the jags money line they better do work <laughs> So I kind of have that like correlation angle uh, of of expecting the game to play out that way. And then going back to Leonard Fournette, um, I have just as uh, I I know you're interested in the the, the scrimmage yards, but over 38 and a half rushing yards minus 114 as well. Like there's some ambiguity, but since he's returned, you know, we set 13 through 17. It's like excluding that that week 18 game, 55 percent snap rate, uh, 10.8 carries, 41 rushing yards per game. But again, it's, a, it's like a, even that alone, first of all, is a, above the, the prop here. And I, I do expect Fournette to be the RB one here. And, you know, they're, I don't know how that game will play out. Uh, I'm having yeah. a little bit of uh, trouble with that one, but from a pace standpoint, we should see a lot of extra plays in this game compared to other games too. Yeah. Um, I also have bucks plus three. So I, I am heavily invested in both years going back to the ETN one. I typically skew towards rushing plus receiving with him specifically though. I would much rather go just rushing because his passing game workload stinks uh, for the most part. It's been a little bit better recently. Um, but I think in this matchup where you can run on Los Angeles, I bet that they focus him in that regard. So with ETN specifically, his rushing plus receiving is almost 100. So getting his uh, rushing alone at 78 and a half, I think that is a much more enticing market for him. Touchdown props. Any of value you see right now? Saquon Barkley, uh, minus 120. I have his odds at minus 145. Uh, Minnesota, not a particularly great defense against, I mean, not a particularly great Anything? defense, but... Uh, against running backs, they're about average in like all the rush metrics that I look at, success rate, net expected points per carry, um, even adjusted FanDuel points per carry, which I know it's not like going to help us um, in that regard, but the the way that I do it adjusts on a an individual level basis. So it helps account for like if you get torched by good running backs, like it's, it's accounted for. And again, not a specific 
touchdown related stat, but uh, they're 27th in adjusted FanDuel points per target allowed to running backs. So I think that like there's, again, I think Barkley could be in line for as much work as he can handle. I think it's a really good matchup. I think this game could be high scoring and uh, the minus 120 odds, I don't think are steep enough based on how I have them projected. Yeah. And uh, Saquon, I think had nine targets the first time they played the Vikings. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if he gets there again, just based on the way he's been using the passing game the past, you know, month and a half or so. Uh, I think that that makes him gives him multiple routes with touchdown as well. Any other bets you like uh, for wild card weekend right now? Oh, I I like Tony Pollard as well to score. Plus oh, OK. Sorry about what, that. What's your uh, thought process there? Uh, I have a, a plus 155 um, again, banking on like his workload to scale up a bit uh, in this game, uh, 53% of the snaps in the relevant sample that I'm looking at. And I, I just kind of think that those are solid odds for someone who it, it, Tampa Bay is it, still a pretty solid rush defense, but they can get kind of, they can give up explosive rushes. So yeah, he's at plus 185 at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. You said plus oh. 155. You have met right. 39 percent um so 39 percent versus uh 35 percent four percent edge pretty good um you'll take that for sure and i agree with you that pollard is in a spot to potentially get skill a bit because he's very good not that zeke's not like zeke is a underappreciated football player but i think that pollard is with the way they treated in week 17 i think that he is a prime candidate to get a little boost here okay what else do you see on the board right now another over so next time i'm on the <laughs> show i gotta i gotta recommend all unders but i probably had that covered from from nba if I, yeah. i'm always recommending unders in nba but tg hawkinson over four and a half catches that is minus 122 but since the trade he's at six and six point six catches on 9.4 targets with a catch rate over expectation of 3.7 percent a dot of seven and a half yards so there's a little bit of leverage there but that's not really what counts for us in, in this prop it's a lot of safe passes that he's converting on um, it's not necessarily easy to have a catch rate over expectation. That's like positive. If you're expected catches are pretty easy, yeah. but the giants also, uh, second worst in catch rate over expectation allowed to tight ends, allowing a mark of uh, 5.0 percentage points there and allow a, a, an above average target per route rate to the position. So I think that it's just, Plus he had what like sixteen targets against yeah. them or something. It's like he had sixteen. Jefferson had fifteen. Saquon had nine. Uh, Isaiah Hodgins had eleven. Richie James had eleven. Like that game was bananas in terms of volume yeah. on both sides. Yeah, so uh, I think it's a really good individual matchup for him uh, for this week, and his role's been pretty solid since the trade overall. Oh yeah, like a twenty three percent target share I think in that time. Um, so as long as the Vikings throw, which they should because they can't run. I know the Vic the Giants struggle against the run, but like the Vikings struggle to run against anyone. Um, so I think that Hawkinson is in line for a good volume week once again. That's all we got here for this wild card weekend prop show and for this wild card weekend week entirely. So Brandon, I want to thank you for swinging by for today and uh and Tuesday and doing two DFS shows with me. I'm sure you're ready to stop hearing my voice uh, in the very near future, but I appreciate it. Good luck to you with Wild Card Weekend. We'll talk to you once again here very soon. Yeah, good luck to you. I uh, hope uh, hope everything goes well this weekend. All righty. Find Brandon on Twitter at Cadula13. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. Make sure you check out our previous shows from this week if you want to get set for a full card of Wild Card Weekend just by searching for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast, hit and subscribe and also checking it out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Good luck to all you this weekend. We'll talk to you once again, Monday to preview Cowboys versus bucks. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel podcast network.